Hello! Today I'm just playing in my supercapacitor playground. So I don't know what it is about supercapacitors, but whenever I use them, I just get really enthusiastic about them. And I've bought a few examples. Uh, let's go through, through a few things. I haven't got a lot of space on my desk today. So these 500 farad, uh, 2.7 volt, 2.7 volt, 500 farad super caps are now on AliExpress from anywhere from $2 up to about, I don't know, four or $5. Um, so I've got four different footprints here. This one, uh, if I take the LED off, uh, this one doesn't seem to be holding a charge. So I think it's um, not working properly. Uh, this is the four pin where the two outer pins, I think, are just for mechanical uh rigidity i got the classic uh two pin uh, super capacitor again 2.7 volt 500 farad that one still seems to be okay um you've got the screw foot type this is an m5 thread um the thing about these is that well i don't know maybe these ones uh if they pull them and they're used they can clean these pins up sufficiently that you can't really tell whether they're secondhand or not. These ones you can't tell at all because uh, they can be mechanically decoupled from the device. Um, this one is a Samwa green cap again, 2.7 volt, 500 farad. And then you've got this type, um, which has the two sort of square pins at 90 degrees to each other. I'm not quite sure who came up with that idea. It's quite novel, I suppose. Uh, this one is a, a GDCPH 2.7 volt 500 farad. And uh, this PCB, which I made some time back, which I called Supercomputer, um, I've been kind of repurposing it for supercapacitors. Here's another one of these 500 farad. A couple of flashing LEDs. Uh, you can put um, these JST2 pins in the same footprint as an LED, and there's a connector there so that I can charge this capacitor. What are these JSTs for? Uh, this, my new favorite battery tester, the Aneng uh, 168 Max, which I've modified. I've ripped off the sort of swinging arm bit, uh, put in a two pin JST, and now I can connect that to here like so. And I've got a uh, voltage indicator for this supercapacitor currently at 2.1 volts. Okay, this one needs charging. So I took two of the LEDs out of this uh, supercomputer and I've got on here a CDA 5.5 uh, volt, 25 farad supercap. This is two supercapacitors in one package. Now they don't have any um, protection circuit in here. And I think they rely on the fact that as you push towards the top voltage of these are probably 2.7 volt capacitors. Um, the um, internal, um, what is it? Discharge, the internal discharge has more of an effect. So in effect, they're self-balancing really, because um, as one, if one were a little bit ahead of the other, then as it gets near the top, um, it loses more in internal discharge and then the other one will catch up. So they don't seem to need balancing as such. But yeah, let's get this charged. So the first thing I need to do is switch on this power supply, uh, like so. Um, this is my new ZK6522L buck converter, which is really nice. I like this one. I'll do a, a video review of this at some point. That's connected by these two connectors to my um, sodium ion battery, which is about 30 volts. In fact, we can see the voltage because if I go to the second display page, you can see V in is 27.64 volts. So that's what's coming in from the sodium ion. Uh, the output of that is going around here up to these super caps on the left. Let me tilt the camera so you can see them. Uh, this block of four supercapacitors. Now I've made these in groups of two and then put these uh, five millimeter terminal posts which screw straight down into the supercapacitor feet. So this is modular so I can have these in blocks of five volts uh, which is two supercaps, 5.4 volts actually. 
So what I want to do is turn on the ZK power supply, which is currently set to, I don't know whether you can see this, is it going to focus on there? Well, it's 10 volts for the super caps, uh, just under one amp. I'll explain why in a minute. So let's turn that on. And that will now uh, charge those four supercapacitors over here. So I'll let those charge up. And while they're, while they're charging up, I'll explain what these two things are doing. So the input of this uh, boost converter is connected to these four supercapacitors. This is a boost converter and this is a buck boost. Now, if you're thinking why, if you've got a buck boost, which is actually a boost buck, why do you need to proceed it with another boost converter? Well, the reason is this one has an input voltage range of, I think, from 5 volts to 30 volts. This one has an input voltage range down to 2 volts. So this one is currently set to boost um, anything from 2 volts up to, well, the 10 volts of these four super caps. Um, up to 12 volts on the output here, and then that 12 volts is going into the buck boost. And the output of that is this USB, which I'm using to charge super capacitors. Um, so yes, this can extract pretty much all of the information from these super caps right down to two volts. Now the energy in a supercapacitor between five volts, which this one would work at, and two volts, um, which this one operates at, is probably not huge, but I just wanted to extract all the energy in these supercaps that I could. Where are we? That's the wrong page. That one does, that's amp hours, watt hours, time and input voltage. I wanna see voltage and current. So. Uh, 3.1 volts on the supercaps. I'm going all the way up to 10 volts. So the voltage on these four supercapacitors is now above the 2 volt starting threshold for this thing. So this is all powered up. This is um, boosting the, well, 3.5 volts currently up to 12, and that's operating that. Now I've got uh, crop clips connected to this uh, USB output. So let's charge this supercapacitor, which is a CDA type. Um, it's 120 farads. This is a three volt supercapacitor. And on this, there's one of these little boost converter boards, um, which I think operates down to 2.2 volts. So I need to get this up to 2.2. It's got a little blue LED that will come on. So let's turn this thing on. What's it set to? Uh, half an amp, so it's charging this supercapacitor at half an amp. Right, we're already up to 2. Point. Yeah, you see, this will have fallen to about 2.2 volts, where this boost converter goes into uh, micro power mode. It goes into standby mode. And I think it's, it says it takes something like 0.1 microamps. It's really quite extraordinary how little... And, and this uh, supercapacitor stayed charged at that 2.2 volts all night so that's basically where we started and that's now climbing up 2.47 um, and I'll take it all the way to 3 volts well I think I will I don't know, don't know what this is set to oh this is set to 5 volts that's probably not ideal so let's bring that down to 3 volts otherwise I will grossly overcharge this CDA supercapacitor oh, it always does that it suddenly speeds up right at the end and then it massively overshoots what you actually want so I want three volts Ugh. okay approaching three volts um, for this CDA supercapacitor now this buck boost converter um, isn't very good at switching between constant current and constant voltage it overshoots um, I think it's going to go up to about 3.1 before it suddenly realizes, oh, I've actually reached the uh, volt, the set voltage because it's set to exactly three volts. And then hopefully at about that voltage, the current will suddenly drop off a cliff. There it is. And then this falls back to the preset voltage of three volts. Yeah, it's a little bit strange this power supply but there we are three volts on this super cap let's put that into the playground um i'll put that there so that little blue led should stay lit for several hours um because it's only pulling a tiny there's a 10k resistor in series with that blue led so it's only pulling a tiny current okay now let's charge 
um, this thing. So I want to charge this up to, well, it says 5.5 volts. Um, they're probably 2.7 volt caps, so it's really 5.4. Let's set this power supply to that. Right, I've gone to 4.5 volts. Oh, that's on. Let's turn that off. Um, so I'll press the up button and hold it all the way up to, was it, what was I going to do? 5.4, wasn't it? There we are. 5.40 I'll attach the crock clips and we'll charge this one okay let's see how quickly this charges at half an amp yeah this power supply actually the same as the ZK you get to see even when you turn the output off you get to see the output voltage so if you're charging a super cap you get to see the super capacitors voltage uh, okay so we're up to 1.4 on here I think these LEDs become visible at about 1.8 volts something like that or around 2 volts let's see what it actually is okay yeah you can see them flashing now at about 1.8 volts so we carry on up to the 5 point whatever volts um, I set it to I think it was 5.4 wasn't it will that sit there without falling over or shorting out on the crock clips yes it will move that over there because I just wanted to see how far um, these four super caps over here are doing, you see their lights are flashing now. These um, flashing LEDs work up to 5.4 volts. They're quite happy at that voltage without series resistors. Uh, yeah, we're up to 7 volts on the super caps. As I say, it's going up to 10 volts. Um, here's another thing I made actually some time ago, and it's just been sitting on the shelf for, oh, I don't know, a couple of years. Um, this has got another one of these 5 volt, 5.5 volt, 2.5 farad this one is, um, CDA dual super caps. And this one I charge really quickly. So I've got these four Eneloop uh, cells, no current limiting, and I'll put the battery in and it just force charges that super cap in about five seconds. And then I can disconnect the battery. Don't want to short anything out, but... Let's disconnect the battery and then that'll sit there for, uh, it's not that long actually on 2.5 farads, um, probably, I don't know, five minutes and these will just get progressively dimmer. Uh, some other supercapacitors I've bought are these 2.85 volt 850 farad capacitors. Now these were charged yesterday. This one's still flashing. This one, oh, I think it might be, but very, very faintly. Um, and these just don't seem to be very good. I'm pretty sure these are secondhand uh, out of something. I don't quite know what. Um, this one, I tried forming these. So bringing them up to 2.7 volts and leaving them there for, well, several days actually. But this one, the little gasket has blown up. It's just a little bubble. I don't know whether you can see that, but it's just sort of inflated that little bubble. So that one's near going pop, I think. So I think I can write this one off. This one seems in better condition. It does at least hold a charge overnight, but um, certainly nowhere near as good as some of these 500 farad super caps. This one I bought recently just for a few dollars um, and it seems near perfect. I think that's a brand new one. Um, like I say, the one with four feet doesn't work particularly well. So that I think is a dud. But uh, n none of these 850 farad ones that I've bought seem to be very good. And uh, this one, this 850 farad, turned up with this big cut in the outer plastic. And I think what happened was customs thought from the weight of it that it might be filled with cocaine or something. And so they sliced into it and they've actually scored the aluminium case quite deeply, actually. Um, it does work. But yeah, they've just cut into that. Oh, I can't get my fingers in there. Yeah, I think you can just see the score line there on the aluminium casing. So this one has been weakened, but I suppose customs do need to do spot checks on <laughs> dodgy looking items. And they obviously don't um, like supercapacitors much. I wonder also whether this sort of dimpled shape made them think perhaps that had been packed with something. I don't know. A couple of these dual super caps. This one says 5 volt, actually, this Maxwell one. Um, so they must be 2.5 volt capacitors 
in there. This one actually says six volts. Where does it say it? Oh, there. Uh, six volts, 1.5 farads. So this one must have a pair of three volt supercapacitors in it. And now the charging of my uh, four supercaps on the left here has completed. So it's at 10 volts. The current is falling away. Those LEDs will be flashing. Uh, so these are up to five volts per pair of supercaps. So they're flashing brightly. So now I can turn off this power supply turn off the output but it continues to show you the voltage on the output um, and that will now of course fall uh, fairly slowly because all it's powering is uh, these two power supplies there's a little green LED on this one and this one has a little LCD display so this with the 25 uh, farad capacitor will probably run for I don't know an hour or so and um, this one, which I charge super quickly by not having any current limiting from my Eneloop batteries, um, has now got quite dim. But then that is only a 2.5 farad capacitor. Uh, yeah, so that's it. That's my super capacitor playground, which I've enjoyed playing with for the last uh, few days. But I'm going to have to pack it away now to do some more sensible videos. Hope you enjoyed that video. That's it. Cheerio.